Hey guys, it's Carrie with Pro Love Tucson. If you're not familiar with our organization, we are a compassionate sidewalk counseling ministry that reaches out to the women and men entering the abortion clinic here in Tucson. We just want to come alongside of them and walk with them through the decision-making process and beyond and love them no matter what they decide. We also partner with a uh, ministry called And Then There Were None, which helps abortion clinic workers leave their job at the clinic and get a fresh start. So that's kind of us in a nutshell. Um, recently, we've been getting a lot of national attention through different pro-life news platforms, which is pretty exciting, um, but it's also caused some of you to reach out to us and ask us why we don't use graphic images while we were reaching out to clients at the abortion clinic. So I just wanted to take the opportunity to share with you guys kind of the reasoning behind that um, and just give you an opportunity to ask any further questions, get more clarification. So I want to start off by saying that we definitely don't look down upon or judge different pro-life groups who do use graphic images. This is just something that we at Pro Love Tucson have spent a lot of thought and prayer on and we just have come to the conclusion that we wouldn't use them. I have a lot of um, friends that I really respect that um, do use them and so I just want to make that clear that um, that's not something that we um, we are judging you know people for. So I do think that graphic images are very impactful when used in an education setting. Um, I just don't believe that they should be used outside of the abortion clinic um, when reaching out to clients. We see we see graphic images being so powerful um, throughout history. One example is when um, Emmett Till, who was a young black man living in the 1950s, was accused of offending a young white woman. He was brutally murdered for that, and his mother chose to have an open casket funeral for him. Um, so that everybody who came to the funeral could see the reality, the brutality of racism. And so thousands of people came, and his picture was also featured on a magazine. So this really shook people up and caused people to reconsider the current um, situation and spurred them on to change. So I definitely believe in an educational setting that using graphic images is important even, so that people do know the reality of abortion. Um, but I, I do think it's a very different situation when you're dealing with somebody who has just found out that they're facing an unplanned pregnancy. Um, you know, I, th I think that when a woman finds out that she's facing an unplanned pregnancy, a lot of times her world will just stand still. She will start having all these fears um, go through her mind. She might be afraid of her reputation, what her friends and family might think. Um, of her getting pregnant. Maybe she's afraid her boyfriend will break up with her, you know, if she doesn't get an abortion. Maybe she wants to finish school. Maybe she's on a scholarship. Maybe she's a married woman who has three kids already and is having trouble making ends meet um, and feels that abortion is her only option. A lot of times she will feel like her identity has changed, that she's not the same person she was before she got pregnant. And that's a really scary place to be in, and rightly so. Um, and she feels that her only way to go back to who she was before she got pregnant is to, to get an abortion. Um, so she kind of goes into survival mode, and that that's where we meet her. She's in this survival mode trying to get her life back um, to the way it was before she found out that she was pregnant. So if we kind of put her, ourselves in her shoes... Um, when she approaches the abortion clinic, if she sees, if she sees a group holding, um, Im signs with graphic images on them, she, um, might assume that they are judging her or that they don't care about her, that they only care about her baby, um, that they don't understand her situation because most of the time these situations are very, very hard, um, Nobody wants to face an unplanned pregnancy, you know, and nobody wants really to get an abortion. Most people don't want to get an abortion, so they're in a very difficult situation. So I think we need to figure out um, what will make the biggest impact because we need her to know that we're there for her and not just her baby. We, we believe that both her and her baby can thrive during and after unplanned pregnancy and we want her to know that so we just want to figure out the best way to do that right i think it's important for us to ask the question what truth does she need to hear first 
is the first truth that she needs to hear while she's in survival mode that abortion is wrong, that it's murder, you know, and that she will be sinning if she um, does this? Or is the first truth that she needs to hear that, look, you're not alone, you're strong, you're capable, and you have time to figure this out? Um, and then give her an invitation for us to walk alongside with her through this process and um, equip her with all of the tools and information she needs to make that informed decision. Um, so I personally believe that um, we, we would see more conversations with women if we're not holding graphic images because a lot of times that will just turn them off completely. Um, I've even met one client who was driven to get her abortion because she was so upset that somebody had showed her a graphic image um, and had her watch a video about abortion. So I just think we need to figure out what um, what makes the biggest impact. And, and maybe you're watching this right now and you've had an abortion yourself and you feel that um, had you seen a graphic image outside of the abortion clinic on that day, you would have changed your mind. I think that's completely valid. I don't want to diminish that at all. I think um, sometimes graphic images do make an impact. Um, I've heard plenty of stories where they have. I just think that more times than not, they upset women um, and they give the impression that we only care about their baby, even if that's not true, you know. Um, because I think many people who use those signs have great intent and great heart behind it. But um, I just think we definitely need to focus on how how can we communicate to her that we're there for her. We're there for her good, you know. Because um, we only have a couple of seconds to show her that as she's driving into the clinic. We, we only have a couple of seconds to convince her that we truly love her and, and care about what she's going through. And... Um, so I think that if holding graphic images gets in the, in, in the way of us doing that, then they can go, you know. Um, when Pro Love Tucson first started, we, we were using signs. They didn't have graphic images on them, but they, they were beautiful. They had loving messages such as, uh, considering abortion, we can help. Um, ask me about free pregnancy tests and ultrasounds, we can help. So these signs were so pretty, super loving, um, but we found that on the days that we were holding them, we spoke with less women. And I think it's because um, when they pull up and see us holding a sign, they just automatically think that we're protesting, you know, and that we're, we're against them and that we're judging them for even considering an abortion. Um, so we actually stopped using them. We just decided, you know, we're going to talk with more women without using them. So even though we spent a lot of time designing these and getting them made up and everything, we're, we're going to see how it goes not using them. And um, we've, we've made contact with so many more clients since then, which has been really awesome. And, and we don't want her to just make a blind decision, you know, once we're able to start that relationship with her, we give her um, a gift bag that has a lot of encouragement in it and a magazine called Before You Decide. And it has um, pictures of ultrasounds of different, you know, babies at different points of development and information about um, abortion and the risks associated with it and just gives her a lot of tools to think through her um her decision and we also really encourage our clients to um, go get a free ultrasound at the pregnancy clinic that we partner with in town because that is a huge game changer for them when they see their baby on the ultrasound screen and hear the heartbeat that is a game changer for so many women um, because it just clicks with them then um, so I think whatever we can do to, to get them, to equip them with that information is so important. Um, I think it's more important for them to see their baby and hear the baby's heartbeat than for them to see a graphic image. There might be a point in a conversation where it might be appropriate to ask them, you know, would you be interested in seeing something like that? And I, I would leave that up to them, but I think when their initial their initial um their first look at us is us holding up a graphic image 
I just think that makes them much less likely to even hear us out and to even want our help because they kind of already think they know what we're about um, when really our heart is for her and we love her and care about what she's going through. We care about both her and her baby. So that's kind of why um, the reasoning behind why we don't use graphic images. I hope that made sense. If you have any other questions though or concerns or want more clarity on it, um, hopefully I touched on everything I was hoping to, but please feel free to reach out to us or if you're interested in learning more about our methods and um, hearing some of the stories about the awesome stuff we've been seeing on the sidewalk, then please do reach out to us. You can email us at prolovetucson at gmail.com or you can just send us a Facebook message right here um, and we'd love to talk with you. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.